Chris, thanks ever so much for doing this. Um, we're a few days on from the City game now. So how do you reflect on what happened at the Etihad? Yeah, I think it was um, obviously a difficult afternoon. And obviously extreme weather was uh, a contributing factor. It was definitely warm and, you know, you're going to concede a lot of possession against City. So I think that element was tough. But, yeah, on the football side, I think it was always going to be um, a tough game. You know, it's going away to the Etihad. Um, home or away is going to be a big ask to sort of get anything from and yeah I think um, we didn't disgrace ourselves by any stretch um, but I think on the day we just came up against a team that was yeah on a much bigger level and I think that's the reality of it and I think yeah we won't be the first team this year to, to go there and you know concede four goals away um, but no we, we tried to stick with it and I think that's uh, credit to the character you know we didn't let our heads drop and um, yeah, it was a, a difficult afternoon, but certainly no. Um, yeah, we're not too down about ourselves for it. Uh, you mentioned the weather there. You've always played. You've always done pre-season in June, July. Been away on warm weather training at different parts of the, the year. Was it very different on Saturday? Though they say that was the hottest day in Premier League history. Yeah, it, it was warm. I think um, it does play its part. Even a training session, you know. Like the weather's been really hot uh, recently and I think you could do the same training session in on a cold day and it does feel very different you know it kind of zaps the life out of you um, a little bit and of course when like I said in, in a game where you're going to be defending a lot and having to move and you know it can be quite exhausting um, compared to a you know a cooler day um, but yeah of course that's what pre-season's there to do you know to prepare you for that and to sort of get, get used to that um, warm weather but yeah there's there's no denying it it does make it that bit harder um, to sort of come up against them and I realise that you go into every game thinking you can or believing you can win or certainly get something out of that game but then once a trip to City is done with them being so very very good do you dwell on it as much as you would another game is it just like any other game in that you know, you approach the aftermath as you would any, or, or or do you look to just write it off quickly? Yeah, I think that's um, it's one thing the manager said straight after the game. You know, no hangover from it. Um, we don't dwell on it. We're not negative about the result because you know they're a team that's on a completely different level, and there's no reason to be down in the dumps about it. You know, we we went with a game plan. We at times ex executed the game plan really well. Um, Certainly in the second half, we looked a lot more you know, compact and a lot more organised. But ultimately, when you've got players that they've got in their team, they're going to get the better of you in certain moments. And, and, and yeah, it, was, it was literally felt like that. Um, but yeah, of course, I think when you've got games where you're playing teams in and around you, there's probably more of a negative when you come away on the back end of the bad result, um, as opposed to playing a Liverpool or Man City, something like that. Um, but ultimately, you know, we go into every game and we want to try and, you know, win every game or get a result from every game. So I think it's not like we went away to the Etihad and, you know, just almost accepted defeat before we started. It wasn't like that at all. Um, but of course, when the game is done and the result's done, I don't think there's any positive in, you know, dwelling on it too much and letting it sort of drag us down going into the next game. No, fair play. And I realise none of you defenders were going around high-fiving each other after conceding four at the end of it, but to restrict Erling Haaland to just the eight touches on his home debut when, there's, when he is a beast, when he, there is so much attention on him and he was so keen to impress, did that feel like a big positive? I think it feels like a positive, yeah. I must admit, during the game, I, I didn't almost appreciate how quiet he was in that moment, I think. Yeah, like I said, when you're involved in the game and when you're focused, you're not really aware of who's getting the touches. And of course, you can feel that some players are quite involved, but at the same time, I wasn't aware of how quiet he was. So I think, yeah, when you come away and you hear bits about how quiet he was and how few passes he had, of course, that does make you feel, um, feel good about yourself because he is someone that possesses so much quality and... He's a striker that's got a lot of attributes to his game. Um, so I think to be able to restrict him to yeah, very little involvement in that match is obviously a positive. But yeah, at the same time, there's 
I think that's the problem. You keep someone like him quiet, and then suddenly De Bruyne, suddenly Foden, you know, Silver, Grealish in the second half become more involved in stuff. And I think that's the the difficult thing when you play teams like that. I think they've got that many good players that unless you keep all of them quiet, then it's going to be a, a tough day at the office. Well, at least it's nice and straightforward this weekend. You've got a team in awful form. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be another tough game, you know. When the fixtures got released, it was always going to be um, a tough month for us. Um, but yeah, to get a, a win on the opening day was very positive. We've gone to the Etihad and yeah, kind of ticked that, that one off as such. Um, and then you've got Arsenal at home and back in front of our home fans. So it's certainly a game that we're, we're looking forward to and we're hoping to get a result from. Um, but yeah, they're obviously a very good side. Um, started the season really well, made some very good signings. So I think yet again, we'll look to keep them players quiet and, and hopefully get a positive result. As much as the manager wants you to put your own stamp on on this game, he also wants you to make it uncomfortable for Arsenal coming here and every team coming here. What are the keys to to making opponents uncomfortable? Yeah, I think there's been a big focus on it. Certainly um, this season, you know, it's going to be different to our season where we're not going to have loads of the ball um, in a lot of games. You know, we're playing against some top, top sides who will have a lot of the ball. So we need to almost find a different way to, like you mentioned, make it uncomfortable for teams to come here. And although teams might have a lot of the ball every time there is a duel to be won, you know, that's where we come alive. And I think that's been been the focus that the manager's sort of given us that, you know, no team comes here and has it all their own way. Um, and I think we've shown that the first game of the season, you know, we it seemed like we frustrated the life out of Villa and we were, you know, up for it in, in a lot of moments in the game and won a lot of second balls, put a lot of tackles in. I think that's the ugly side we need to be this year. And, um, and yeah, Saturday's going to be no different. When you describe things like that, the, the image that comes in my head is, is a sort of a rousing John Terry doing a Churchillian type speech in the dressing room <laughs> just as everyone goes out. Is there, does someone have that role here to... You know, everyone knows what's needed before they come out for the first whistle. But does someone deliver those final, last important words? Is it always the same person? Yeah, to be honest, I think um, the dressing room is quite vocal. Um, certainly in the couple of minutes before we head out, um, I think it's one thing that you know everyone gets in the change room. Everyone you know goes around half hard in, gene each other up. Um, a lot of big voices in there, and I think everyone contributes towards that whether you're starting or not starting I think there's always an importance to you know get the change room going and you know and you do feel it I think if you're in a dressing room which is quite quiet and you know it's, it's difficult to suddenly go out and go at war um, so see I think it, it comes from a lot of people of course there's players that are more vocal than others but I think a lot of lads do contribute to a yeah, quite an upbeat change room um, before the game. Football's supposed to be fun, Chris. You're describing it as war. <laughs> I think uh, it's got to be like that this year, certainly for us. Fair enough. Um, take me back a couple of years to your first run of games here at Bournemouth because you had a similar sort of nightmarish run. You had heavy defeats by Liverpool, Arsenal, also lost to City. I think there might have been another big team in there as well. I mean, how big a shock to the system was it? Do you remember? Yeah, I think, um, of course, joining a Premier League team, you don't quite appreciate the step up until you're living in it and you're out there on the pitch and you're experiencing it. And I think it's one thing that I certainly came away from and it makes you realise how good a level it is, you know. Um, I've spoke before about the biggest thing that I've noticed, the difference um, in going up to the Premier League. It's just, you know, a tiny mistake and just get punished like that um, and yeah you've got such amazing players and top teams at this level that you don't really get away with anything um, so yeah of course when you um, when you play these teams um, it's important to get results but realistically there's going to be games where you don't and I think I think the message is to stick with it and don't go in your shell and don't sort of lose faith in, in what we want to do this year and um, and I think if we do that, we'll be fine. And having been 
relegated in the, the first full season you had here. Are there any lessons that are useful to take from that campaign into this one at all? Yeah, I think um, there's a few lads, obviously, that have been in the team when when we got relegated last time. Um, so I think you've experienced the lows of it and and how tough it is to get back into the Premier League. Um, so I think we can sort of use that experience um, to benefit us. Um, but ultimately, it's you know, a different team, it's different ideas, different tactics, um, a different manager. So of course, it's going to feel different and be different. Um, but yeah, I think we're all focused on the task at hand. We know it's, it's going to be a big ask, but I think um, we've shown certainly the first game of the season that you know we can go head to head with with teams like Villa and and teams like that, and we've got to take real confidence from that going forward. And bigger teams in your time here, Bournemouth have beaten Spurs here, Man United here. Can you describe this place on on occasions like that? Yeah, definitely. I think in front of a home crowd, you know, here, I think it does feel so much more positive. You know, it, I think naturally when you're playing away from home and you know you've got the the home atmosphere and it, it it can be tricky once teams get momentum and I think for how it is like that going away we've got to make sure it's like that at home that when you feel the momentum you feel the crowd behind you that you make the most of it and I think there's been some special nights here certainly my Bournemouth debut was against Chelsea I think it was 4-0 4-0 that day so it just shows that you know, you're coming up against top teams and there's no reason why you can't, you know, beat teams like that. And we've done it in the past and 100% this year we'll continue to do that. And that's what I mean, you've got to go into every game with with one aim and that's to win the game. I think I misread the results. When I said that your your start was horrible, that 4-0, that, that was an extraordinary day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, um, I think I'd, it was a couple of days after I joined. Yeah. Um, I think I joined on the 21st of Jan and I think that would have been a couple of days after so sort of coming in and you beat Chelsea 4-0 at home and you think Jesus this is easy like if only it could be like this every week um, yeah there's been some really special nights here of course the, the Nottingham Forest game here last year um, just shows the, the importance that fans can have and you know when when you're at at home and you've got that crowd behind you we need to make it our fortress this year and I think we're certainly looking forward to doing that I've harked back to to the previous time Bournemouth were in the Premier League you mentioned yourself a lot has changed uh, since then how much have you changed as a, as a player and as a man since you were first in the Premier League yeah I think um, I think like a lot of people's career it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster, you know and a lot of highs and lows um, a lot of injuries like I mentioned I had two knee operations um, in the year we got relegated which was difficult you know um, I think it was after the restart um, sort of ready to kick on for that final stretch of games and I had to have a operation on my meniscus which was, was tough and there's moments like that of course last season you know not being in the team and not being in the squad and um, and then suddenly you start the first two games of a Premier League season. You know, it's, it is the highs and lows of a footballer. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm really enjoying myself at the minute, obviously being back in the team. And um, and yeah, I do feel like I've grown as a person. I've you know experienced a lot on the international stage, um, playing in the Euros in high-pressure games like that. And, you know, games where you're qualifying for the World Cup and, and bits like that. And I think all of them experiences alongside not being in the team and stuff like that. I do feel like it's made me mentally a lot more stronger and, and resilient. And yeah, hopefully I can sort of show that this year. I know it's not all been uh, um, glorious, but 2022, winning promotion, playing Premier League matches, qualifying for a World Cup as well. It's not been too bad this year so far, is it? Yeah, I think that's sometimes um, when you get caught up in the moment of I'm not in the team, I'm on the bench, I'm frustrated, I'm, you know, it's, it's tough to watch your teammates out there on a Saturday and you're not, you don't feel involved, but when you take a step back and certainly over the summer when you've got a bit of time to reflect on, on things and what you've achieved at, you know, at 24 years old, I think when you do that, it makes you appreciate what a good position you're in and um, how there's been a lot of positives to it. I think 
I'm always one where I'm quite harsh on myself and I reflect a lot on games and I overanalyze stuff in certain moments and and like I said when you're in that moment it, it you can feel like it's, it's quite negative you know it's, your career's not going the way you want it to but like I said taking a step back it makes you appreciate um, yeah that you know things have been all right and there has been a lot of positives in my career today are you getting better at not being too down on yourself because of course being your own worst critic can be a very positive thing because it drives you on but it can also if you get it wrong it can send you the wrong way as well can't it so has experience helped you do you still feel you've got work to do on that front yeah I think it's um it's something that I've I feel like I've improved a lot within myself um you know I think my first couple of games in professional football when I was at Brentford I remember I used to watch every single game back and analyse every game even watch some training sessions back I think because I was new to it I almost wanted to soak as much information as possible and I think over a period of time you sometimes realise that that's not necessarily the best thing to do of course it's important to look back at bits and games at goals you concede at also positive things you do in the game but I think over analysing and being too down on the back end of a, a bad result I think that can sort of drag you down and um, you almost lose sight of yeah the next game and I think in this league like I said there's no point in being too negative and too down because suddenly you've got another tough game in five or six days time so I think I've definitely got better at you know putting the game to one side whether it's a good game or bad game and um, not being too high not being too low and just kind of trying to take the rough of the smooth and such it's like everything isn't it you could train I could train a hundred hours a week or whatever but I wouldn't know what I'm doing and the training wouldn't be as successful and useful as it it should be if I had an expert sort of showing me how to do it and and equally with analysis you can you can analyze things the wrong way and focus on the wrong thing so is this stuff that you've just taught yourself and have and have learned a better way or have you, have you had some guidance as well yeah, I think um, I think certainly here, you know, we, we always analyse games. Um, you know, we do um, unit meetings. We'll look back at, you know, it's, it's almost pointless in a way having the whole team watch defending clips of us around our defensive box because they don't really need to be in that. So I think a lot of the time we have unit meetings where it'll be defenders only and we'll look back at defensive moments and... I'm sure the attackers do it where they look back at attacking transitions and bits like that. And I think all the information that they'd want you to see will be in their meetings. Um, so I think anything that's important, and of course, if there's certain things that you're not doing right or tactically you're not aware of something, they'll always be the first ones to tell you. Um, so I think I've kind of got that mindset where, of course, I want to look back at games and watch the highlights back to see if I could have done better in certain moments. But I think anything that's that important and if there's a message that they want you to see then they'll show you um, and ultimately then you're getting the, the information that is needed as opposed to looking at negatives that you don't really need to look at. Yeah and for the same reason switching off is so important isn't it because yeah, otherwise exactly. you just drive yourself mad. Yeah. Um, let me ask you one final thing about a new teammate Neto have you been grilling him about the stars of Barcelona and you know what what they've uh, what you can learn from that side of things do you know what? i was a bit disappointed that i didn't make his um his best ever father side team i thought my uh, performance in the small side of game the other day was good enough to be in that but i suppose when you've got likes of um danny alves Lionel messi um players like that that are featured in it it's going to be uh, a big ask to get in it but but no he's someone that's had a an amazing career um to play one game for Barcelona is <laughs> unbelievable. Never mind, you know how, how many games he has played. Um, and yeah, I think he's someone that can be ben uh, very beneficial around the place. Um, the experiences that he's had, both internationally and you know at the top top level, um, working with the best staff, best players out there. I think you can use his guidance and and to be fair to him, he's been very vocal. Um, around the place in training you know a couple of times he's pulled me and 
told me you know a few bits about playing out and, and stuff like that and I think it's important that you take on someone like him the knowledge he's passing on because like I said he's someone that's experienced uh, a lot of things in his career.